my name is Canlon Frost and we're in the workshop of Canlon Handcrafted. Today I have with me a very special guest and I'm honored to have my wife Stacy here. Uh, we're going to be working on, uh, well what are we working on today Stacy? We are creating milk paint. We're creating milk paint, alright great. Um, milk paint is uh, a very very old style um, traditional paint that was used. Uh, you're probably familiar with red barns. Um, well, they were painted uh, with milk paint and uh, with ingredients that farmers had on hand uh, in the area they were. So some of the, those ingredients are, um, we've got uh, lime, and I don't mean lime like the citrus, but uh, this is called uh, hydrated lime or slake lime. Uh, you can get it at a gardening center or a home center. Um, it's builder's lime is also what it's known as. Known as it's also for raising the pH in, in gardens, that kind of a thing. Um, so we've got some of this. We've also got some colored pigments. Uh, in this case, I've got some blue and some red pigment. Uh, also found these at the home center. These are just uh, uh, chalk line chalk. So uh, you can get those in like 2.5 pound bottles uh, and eight as small as eight ounce bottles. So those are some of the ancillary ingredients, but of course the main ingredient in milk paint is what? Milk. Milk, right. So what we use is skim milk. Uh, that's the no fat milk that, uh, that you can buy just about anywhere. It's um, uh, not two percent, not whole milk, it's skim milk. And we've got uh, some of that right here in this in this jar. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix this stuff together. Mm -hmm. So uh, according to some of the resources that I've read, we're just going to uh, uh, mix in the lime uh, until it becomes kind of a, uh, a thicker consistency than, like more of a, a, a very rich, rich cream kind of. Not creamy as in... Uh, Cream cheese. Cream cheese, right? But, more but, like creamer. Yeah. Right, more like creamer, exactly. exactly. So, uh, but we'll do two different colors. We'll do the red and we'll do the blue. Uh, so we'll go ahead and divide this up into the, um, these glass containers. Do you want to help me with that? Sure. Thanks. I'll go ahead and get these things ready. One of the benefits of this kind of uh, paint is that it's non-toxic. Uh, it doesn't have uh, uh, some you know nasty chemicals. It's it's all very natural. Uh, lime, as I said, you add it to your garden, so it can't be that bad. Uh, some of these um, pigments, uh, you can also find earth pigment. Pigments are a little harder to find in in my experience. Um, you can even use uh, acrylic paint, but um, uh, I found that the uh, powder pigment works a lot better because it's in its con concentrated form. Okay, so now we've got our milk here, and uh, we won't drink this just yet, no matter how thirsty we are, right? No. <laughs> so, uh, all right, well, um, let's take our little, uh, little shell spoon here, and I'll go ahead and put some in yours, mm -hmm. and then uh, I'll put some in mine, and while you mix yours up, I can mix mine up. So we're going to do maybe uh, two pretty uh, pretty good helpings of this of this uh, slate lime here, also called hydrated lime. Um, there's another kind of a lime uh, that's not hydrated. Don't get that. That stuff's really caustic and it can be really nasty. You don't want to use that stuff. Sure, just a light scoop is fine. That's good. We're not mixing very much, but if you're mixing a lot of this stuff, uh, you probably want to wear like maybe a mask or something like that because uh, this stuff it's the it's very fine dust. Not only the hydrated lime, but also the the powdered pigments are very very fine. And so they get caught up in, in any drafts you might have uh, in your shop or wherever you're working on this stuff. 
All right, that's pretty good. This is it's kind of like a really like a thick milk, like a, like a creamer almost really. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, this has got to be about the consistency of paint, right? Because that's what this is. This is paint. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the coloring in. And uh, here I'll give you the red, and I'll take the blue. It's just about anything to, to scoop the, the color in. Now the color just depends on how, how rich you want it to be. Uh, keep in mind that it's going to come out much lighter than the first fresh wet coat you put on. Uh, it's about 40 to 50 percent lighter in color than when you first put it on. So usually it'll need a couple of coats at least. But still, um, uh, give yourself some generous Sorry about that. Uh, some generous leeway here with the with the coloring. Do lost count there, but uh, we'll do however many that was. Just generous help, helpings, and we'll just start stirring up and see what we come up with here. I think probably it ended up being around a couple of tablespoons. Okay, so a couple of tablespoons. Yeah, I've got a. a it looks like a very dark blueberry blue here, which is which is what I'm going after. I've got a project that I'm working on um, that I'll show you maybe in the next in the next episode. Mine is kind of a rust color. All right, you're just kind of rust color. That's that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now to apply these paints, it's pretty straightforward. You just use um, a natural hair bristle brush like these, uh, they call them chip brushes, you can get them anywhere. Alright, great. And you just apply it like you would any, any kind of paint. You can apply it a little thicker. You don't need to prime the wood with this paint. In fact, that's kind of the, the charm of it is, depending on how, how light you brush it on, you can still see some of the wood grain show through, which is kind of neat. People like that for uh, that shabby chic style furniture. And if you're interested in doing this yourself, be sure to look down in the, in the description uh, of this video. We'll have the ingredients there. Yeah, that looks nice. Almost looks a little bit like the French flag here. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so we've got this really beautiful, almost an orangey, uh, r rust color red. And we have this kind of a, a vibrant blue here. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more and then see if I can make it darker. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll go ahead and add some more to mine too and see if we can't make it a little darker as well. You do want to stir this stuff while you're using it because it does have a tendency to collect down at the bottom. So you want to keep it suspended. I'll about double my recipe here. As far as the color is concerned, and let's see how that how that does. You do want to stir this stuff up pretty well. And make sure that any of the lumps are evened out. Well, it might, after a, a couple of coats, make more of a difference. Seems like slightly more uh, opaque. Yeah, you know, I can I can see a difference in yours for sure. That, that looks uh, uh, quite a bit richer in its tone. Mm -hmm. So the milk needs 
to be room right. Temperature. That's right. Yeah, it needs to be at uh, at room temperature, um, and that helps everything mix up because because a lot of times when you're mixing things and you are trying to get these things to bind, mm -hmm. uh, there's something about cold water, cold liquids that keep things from being able to really bind with each other. Hot water is mm -hmm. much more. Uh, yeah, it helps it dissolve. Yeah, yeah, it adds to that solubility. Well, First one is more see-through. You can still see the grain pretty well. And the second is, uh, well, you're taking it one step further. Yeah, yeah. I that's I can definitely see. This looks more like the barn red. You're familiar with. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can see here how it's this one's lighter and this is a little darker and this one's darker. This is the second one that, that you did, right? Mm -hmm. And then this is the first one. It's got a much lighter shade. And of course, uh, we'll let this sit for um, uh, for an hour or so. We'll come back and we'll. Uh, put another coat on, and we'll see how it goes. All right, now it's been, uh, what do you say, about an hour or so? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, here we have our test piece that we've done. Uh, if you remember, we did the, uh, this was the, the lightest mixture, and then this was the mixture at about double the quantity of pigment. Um, and then again, we have the same thing with the, the lighter color blue. Uh, our first coat, and then this was the um, darker mixture of pigment. And there's not a huge variation between them, although if you put it on more coats, I'm sure that, that one would become more pronounced and probably hide the grain uh, or the, the surface a little more. But uh, for the most part, they came out about the same. Um, and in that hour, they're pretty much dry to the touch. Uh, it does have that uh, kind of shabby sheet country texture to it, almost a, a gritty uh, texture. And uh, you can knock that down lightly with, with the real light uh, sandpaper. Um, now, if you put water on this, is it going to leave a ring or is it going to... Uh... Yeah, will it, will it stain? Uh, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is this may or may not be something you want to use on a surface that's going to get wet. Um, I've never put any kind of a sealing coat over it, although I'm sure that you could. But uh, but I don't know. I, I think one of the qualities and one of the charming factors about using uh, milk paint is that uh, you know if it gets spotty, if it gets a little uh, worn around the edges, I think that's kind of the look that you go for when you want to do a traditional milk paint finish because it is simpler. It harkens back to a more rustic time when things weren't, uh, you know, uh, gloss finished mm -hmm. and that kind of a thing. So, so again, it's, it's just part of a style. Uh, and in this case, a very traditional style. So I'm assuming these would be for indoor pieces. Right, right. This particular mixture um, is for indoor painting. But there is a mixture that you can use um, where you add boiled linseed oil to the mix to give it uh, a waterproof quality or water resistant quality for an exterior use. Uh, but because you're using um, an oil base there, it'll take uh, a bit longer for it to dry. Mm -hmm. um, here I have a, a small tool chest that I've uh, just finished building. And um, as you can see, it's got this is just one coat here. And this it's this uh, uh, very nice blue color, which is actually the same exact blue that we used here. And uh, just to contrast that with the original pine, the inside is not finished. And you can see here uh, the uh, uh, the unfinished inside. And we'll put another coat on this and, and do some touch up. But uh, for the most part, that's that's about what it will look like right there. And as we've discovered, a little goes a long way. That's right, a little goes a long way, and in fact, um, here's what we still haven't uh, used, and all I did here was we put uh, some baggies, Ziploc baggies, and tied it with a rubber band uh, to keep some of the air out and keep it from drying out too much. This will last maybe uh, another day or so, but you really want to use uh, homemade milk paint pretty quickly. It is a perishable uh, product and it will go bad and of course once it starts going bad you don't want to use it anymore um, 
So, uh, so anyway, that's just a good way to keep it. You can put it in, in your refrigerator, make it last a little bit longer. Don't forget to stir it up as you use it and before you use it uh, to make sure everything is held in suspension and you get an even, even coat. Um, was that it? Did we cover everything? I think so. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us here uh, at the uh, Callan Handcraft Workshop, and we look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you.